Almost ready. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Kiyomi from Say Me Tea. She's been on the show before creating amazing recipes with her products, which I love. The ones I love the best are the unforgettable dark roast. This is this tastes like coffee, but it doesn't have any coffee in it. It's made from just organic brown rice. And I think of all the coffee substitutes I've tried, it's the best tasting and the most coffee. Like I don't drink it as a beverage. I use it to make my frappuccinos, my guilt-free frappuccinos. So this is one I love. And what I'm drinking right now is the green tea, decaffeinated, of course. And she's going to be using some of her wonderful products, which I'll give you a code for below to make some amazing holiday recipes like a stuffed acorn squash. And she's going to be making a creme brulee without sugar. So please welcome back to the show, Kiyomi. I can't wait to see what you got up your sleeve. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jeff AJ. Nice to see you again. And um, I'm really happy to be here for this special time of the year with you. Uh, I'm really grateful for uh, this opportunity to get connected with your uh, people, with your friends. And uh, hopefully, you know, some of them already, some of you already drinking semi tea. So anyway, today, I love to share the recipes using a green tea and brown rice. And while I'm doing it, I'd love to talk about um, the techniques you can use the green tea in your cooking. And also, uh, you know, whatever the questions you have, you know, that, that uh, drinking you know, green tea and then you have probably questions, you know. Um, so please shoot the questions. Um, and then I'd love to answer. And uh, also, actually, I had questions for you too. <laughs> so um, probably some of you are already drinking green tea. And I love to know where you are about the green tea journey. So for example, um, if you're already drinking green tea, you know a lot about green tea and now you are ready to move on to the next level, like, you know, cooking with green tea, you know, you'd have to include the green tea here and there and everywhere. Or you are still considering, you know, because of caffeine or whatever the reason is, uh, considering about the consuming green tea. And hopefully this show is gonna help you to clear up the question and then you can take advantage of the different uh, discount and start to use the pure semi tea. So uh, that is the goal here. <laughs> nice. Okay. So um, if you have a um, way to just uh, you know type it in, um, please answer my question. Well, I'm considering green tea, or um, I'm. I've, I've been drinking green tea for, you know, X years, and um, now I'm eager to learn more, um, you know, whatever, whatever it, with your um, language. So please jot it down. Well, so far, I don't see anybody answering that question, but I did see Donna say, I'm so excited because creme brulee is my favorite dessert. Oh, wow. Great. Yeah. It's the richness and decadence. And um, it's so easy. We don't have to use the oven for that. Um, this is, um, I'll show you. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna start with the um, very hearty comforting recipe using the acorn squash. And um, maybe you are already familiar with it, but uh, if not, I'm gonna just start to cut it because I didn't know how to cut it. <laughs> so I have to look it up. So you need a sharp knife and uh, go just, you know, kind of back and forth, back and forth, and then, you know, cut the ends. And please be careful. This, kind of, this might be a little bit, you know, kind of intimidating, but once you've done you know, a couple of, couple of times, you'll get used to it. So, Sifreja, how do you do this? Yeah, you know, it's funny, I don't have the best knife skills. And so what I do is I pressure cook it first in my pressure cooker ah. to get it nice and soft. And then it cuts very easily. Good idea. You know, I, I have to try that because, um, you know, doing this, 
I'm kind of concerned about wasting that some of the good part of the, uh, the vegetable, right? Just like, like this. And to re uh, the steaming pressure cooking would do the solution. Okay, so, and then uh, just put in a half. See if I can spread it. A little more, I need to cut a little more. Okay, finally. Right, and then you have to clean it. Just read the spoon. So just um, get the cheese out. And then actually, I'm going to. Yeah, this one, just to, and put this one under the running water and the wet every side. And then here's the um, spice I have. It's a um, Thai spice made with cardamom, cinnamon. Um, actually, this is one of the um, new products we, we're going to introduce next month. Um, we don't have the packaging yet, but we're going to do it. We, have a wonderful um, food developer. And she is the um, award winner for the uh, chocolate bar. And she created this recipe for us. So it's well balanced, wonderful product. So just liberally put the um, spice like that. And then you treat those both and then put this down on the pan like this. And because the surface is wet, a little bit of steaming effect is gonna go. Can you see it? Nice. Okay. Yeah, okay. There we go. And I already have the um, uh, crust in the oven already. So I'm gonna put this away for now. Okay, and then here is the technique number one. Actually, I wrote an article about um, eight techniques, eight techniques to, to use matcha or cinta powder in everyday meals. And this is one of the advanced skills. If you are using a green tea powder, I have to find this, the earphone. Excuse me. Here we are. Found it. Okay, so eight of one of the eight techniques, and this is the one one of the um, advanced recipe. I mean, one of advanced techniques. That means green tea is not just simple tea because of the umami and the hint of um, bitterness, astringency. It actually creates a soup-like effect. And I remember somebody said, um, when I offered a sample cup, that person said, hmm, this doesn't taste like tea. It tastes like soup because of the, uh, the, you know, that consistency from powder too. So anyway, we will take advantage of that um, character. So what we have is one cup of farro grains. And if you, uh, allergic to gluten, you can use, you know, like quinoa, uh, but I, 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 like, I love the nuttiness of this farro with the acorn scratch. So I already rinsed and measured one cup of the farro. And then add a quarter teaspoonful of decaffeinated green tea powder. This is a sing new single serving packet. Actually, it, it became to stick and it's easier to use for water bottles. Anyway, so just put it in here, nothing special. And then add two cups of water. Okay. And 
other ingredient is just red onion. Everything's gonna, better. With, yeah, everything's better with red onion. Yeah, we love it too. It's a special. It's different from regular onion, isn't it? Okay, so we're gonna use just a quarter. <clears throat> if you like red onion, like Chef AJ, you could use more too. It's gonna, Cook down pretty well, so it doesn't have to be really, really pretty. <laughs> it can be just a triangle, <laughs> triangle pieces. Okay, so, all right. And then just to give it a, a little bit of stir so it gets evenly distributed and put it on the stove. About half an hour or so, and then it'll get cooked nicely. And you won't really taste the green tea, but actually, you know, that flour of grains absorbs that nice flavor from green tea. And it'll be a fantastic uh, combo with the sweetness of the squash. Now, the oven is calling me. I have to check the, um, the squash. Yep. All right, it's going well. So I, I put this, this squash um, about 20 minutes ago. So 20 minutes more to go. And I'm gonna do the, okay. This oven was preheated for 400 degrees and I'm gonna reset 20 more minutes. Now, we have time to um, prepare for the cranberries. So you can use raw or frozen, but I have one cup of cranberries here. You know, I was just at the store this morning. You know how much a bag of cranberries is by me? 25 cents. Oh my gosh, that is a great news. Isn't it? That's, I just stock up and put them in the freezer. There you go. Yeah. Um, you know, you can use the cranberries, beautiful colors. You know, it's, it gets a really nice addition to the, this squash. And you can see it later on. Okay. So um, this much cranberries, frozen ones, will um, get pretty well roasted about in 15 minutes or so. I'm going to wait a little bit. But um, yeah, so if it gets scorched, you're gonna, you're gonna lose the um, really beautiful color. So uh, I'm gonna wait about five more minutes. Okay, so um, when this, um, the farro is cooked and the squash is cooked, um, we're gonna assemble. And in the meantime, um, I'm gonna do the creme brulee. But before we go into that uh, cranberry recipe, um, I'm wondering if you have any questions. I understand that you are, you know, all of you are really sensitive, um, really keen to that healthy eating. You know, um, so a lot of vegetable and fruit and the phytochemicals, you know, abundant antioxidants. So, I'm wondering if any of you are wondering why green tea? I'm looking in the chat to see if they have yeah. any questions. Okay. They just want the creme brulee. <laughs> That's what everybody's, <laughs> here. Okay. everybody's here for the creme brulee. <laughs> okay. All right. Maybe we'll ask that, you know, go back to the question after the creme brulee then. <laughs> Wow, Colleen paid $3 for a bag of cranberries. You got to shop at Winco, guys. It's 25 cents for a 12 ounce. So, how bag. big is that bag? 12 ounces, which is the right ounces? size. It's a perfect size for my recipes. Wow, wow, 25 cents. 
wow, that is just insane. Yeah, you know? they, every year it's like that. I don't know why. So I, I just take advantage. That's <laughs> Nana says, it, Here's a comment from your question. Susanna says, we drink green tea for cancer preventing properties. Okay, great. Yep, that's a good idea. And, um, you know, the cancer is uh, caused by various reasons, but um, uh, the, the most, the biggest thing you can add from drinking green tea is actually maintenance of DNA. And it is just amazing. Um, if you hear about antioxidants, okay, antioxidants neutralize, detoxify um, free radicals. Free radicals are the, uh, the toxic, toxic substance actually um, side effects of any of the life, you know, every, anything you do, if you are exercising, if you are breathing, after your system is creating free radicals that attacks your healthy cells. And um, so those antioxidants will donate one electron to the free radicals to stabilize them, that detoxify them. So um, then why is green tea? Green tea antioxidants are special question mark, right? And uh, so one thing is green tea antioxidants called catechins are well studied. It's been like 10, 20 years and um, it started in um, Asia, especially in Japan and um, American, uh, the number of the studies done by European countries and American countries are really skyrocketing and um, they are finding um, amazing effects, including um, uh, neutralizing the free radicals. And uh, they are finding actually antioxidants from green tea catechins are um, preventing DNA damage and um, fixing up the um, DNA um, including telomeres, mitochondria, that level. So it's not just, you know, going through the, your um, digestive system and then go out. It's not that. Actually, it is going through the system and um, doing their job and then um, down to the cellular level. And, and um, so that's what the scientists are discovering. And also another thing uh, I just read um, about the nutrition generally was, um, okay, then what if, if you take catechin supplement and that study talked about, you know, their study and also the other um, citations, you know, other people's studies and they concluded it's not the same effect. And why? And the scientists talked about actually because green tea is a real food, as simple as that. And the supplement is, you know, supplement. Okay, if you buy a bottle of a cardigan and then you get the cardigan, but green tea offers more than cardigan. It's actually amazingly rich in uh, trace minerals. And you know, those things are really hard to get. For example, zinc. And zinc is great for boosting up the immunity. And um, zinc cannot go into the cells by themselves. Zinc, zinc cannot go into the cells by itself they need a helper transporter and catechins turn out to be the transporter. So, hey, green tea is like, um, excuse me, I'm gonna stick this one here. Perfect, 12 more minutes. Oh. <laughs> Jerry said, if you put the green tea in a smoothie, is that still okay? Does it still have the properties and the benefits that are so important? Yeah. Okay. That is a great question. Okay. So um, that's two questions, right? Okay. So the combination of the nutrition and the green tea is well known for binding up with iron. 
So if you are trying to get the, um, an iron from the smoothie, don't put the green tea in it. Okay, that will negate it. So for example, if you're making a ton of you know, spinach smoothie to get the iron, okay, you might not want to add the green tea because it kind of negates, you know. Um, but actually, um, you can separate that nutrition iron, for example, um, one hour before and after before you take the uh, green tea. So that will be fine. Another thing, probably you don't use cow milk anyways. However, cow milk or um, binding up with catechin antioxidants. Um, one of the studies though said it's not actually negating it. It's actually slowly working on it. So just, um, it seems like catechins are not working when you take green tea with cow milk, but actually the effects coming up slowly and um, disappear slowly. So um, that is one of the studies I, I, I read. But if you are uh, using soy milk, I just turn it down the furrow so it will simmer. Um, if you're using the plant-based milk, like almond milk, soy milk, oat milk, you know, hemp milk, cashew nuts, co coconut, they, they are fine. They, they will be a beautiful, they will make a beautiful green tea latte. So nutrition combo issue is, you know, that. And um, I have to add, you guys don't drink coffee, I'm sure, but if you are, um, you know, with somebody who drinks coffee and, uh, you know, if that person points out, hey, you know, if you are anemic, you know, you're not supposed to drink green tea because of that, you know, the, uh, the biting up effect. Actually, coffee does that too. So, you know, it depends on actually uh, what you read and what media talks about. So that's that. Okay. And another effect, you know, I get asked often is the temperature. So for example, I am cooking uh, the uh, squash right now for 400 degrees. And for the same uh, temperature, somebody did uh, the, the um, experiment and studied how the collagens will hold up with that high temperature. And you know, after 20 minutes, in a 400 degrees cooking stove, actually the catechins didn't degrade at all. And then after that, slightly degre degre degraded. And then about 60 minutes after it started to come down to the 80%. So if you are using hot water or hot milk to make a nice delicious cup of green tea, don't worry about it. It's not harming catechins at all. If you read the article about, no, 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 green tea is sensitive, delicate, so don't use the hot water temperature. Well, that person may read something, you know, wrong information out there, but the fact is that temperature, hot temperature, is harming the delicate flavor, not the antioxidant catechins. So to enjoy the flavor, wonderful, mild, soothing flavor, okay, the perfect temperature is like between 150 to 175. That is the best temperature. And remember, every time you pour the hot water, the temperature goes down. So if you are making a um, tea, and um, using a cream coffee cup or in a tea cup and pour the hot boiling water once and actually a couple of times will decrease the temperature perfectly, you know, a couple of times and then you have the right temperature to enjoy the delicate flavor of green tea. And guess what? That mug you use to decrease the temperature, it's clean. It's just the hot water. So you don't have to wash it, just, you know, put it away. So um, that is the um, fact about um, the 
combination and the temperature of, to make green tea. Yeah, so thank you. That was a great question. So, seven more minutes. Okay, now, should I go into the creme brulee? Okay, I will add, okay, so this is cashew nuts, just one cup. Go into the food processor and then, okay, this is our favorite date paste. And I'm sure you have beautiful date paste recipe from Chef AJ. And Chef AJ, maybe you, you could add the link to the show notes. Could you add the recipe to the show notes? Okay, thank you. Sure. <laughs> okay, great, awesome. Yeah, all right, so one cup cashew nuts and three yeah. date paste. Yeah. People are asking if you could use regular matcha in the first recipe. And I don't, I don't, they, they, I'm not sure they know that you make both caffeinated and decaffeinated at your company. Mm. Yeah. Um, either way, matcha or centa powder, centa powder decaffeinated, all of them work. And um, I use the decaffeinated because, you know, often the case, we enjoy this this dish at the dinner time and I don't want to get bothered by caffeine. So that works very well. But if you are okay with caffeine, yeah. And if you have matcha in the pantry, why not? Yeah, that is totally fine. Okay, so um, I put the three tablespoons of the date paste and then water. Okay, so water is a quarter cup or um, four tablespoons, one, two, oops three, four, okay. And then, now this time I'm gonna put the um, half teaspoon full. So I'm gonna use two sticks. Okay. And ta-da, yeah, this adds a nice kind of deep flavor. Okay, I need one tablespoon, I'm gonna use this one. Oops. It's a little more than one tablespoon, okay. Okay, so that's it. Oh. I'm going to make a noise and um, process it. So it, it takes a, a little while, so hopefully um, you, you don't go away. <laughs> and just to make sure you know, everything is gonna get processed, you know, one piece doesn't doesn't get really um, left out. After it's smoother, the better. You know, the creme brulee is smooth. Mm -hmm. I wish I had the powerful, you know, um, nut milk maker. Probably <laughs> that's the better job. Oh yeah, the nutra milk. You should get that. That's really good. I saw that on your show and I am, you know, not craving for it. Yeah. There's 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 still a $50 off code. It's I use it as a food processor because it's so powerful. Oh yeah. I'm I'm sure it's so handy.
To get your discount, um, we can get there um, from your website, right? Oh, um, it's um, yeah, I'll email it to you. It should be easy. <laughs> okay, great, thank you. Sure. And, uh, um, I found um, your Instagram has a lot of lists too. You know, link tree, mm -hmm. and probably right. I, I can find them from there too. Yeah. So if I want to take um, take advantage of that and tell tell that to my friends. It's getting better. Okay, one more. <laughs> yeah, it's better. Okay, so. I don't know if you can see it, but the consistency is pretty smooth. I could probably process, you know, half second or one minute more, and then it's going to be no, you know, that no piece, uh, no trace of pieces at all. But um, you can put it. This is very, very rich. It's amazingly filling. So you want to leave a, a room. If you're, if you're uh, eating this as a dessert, um, but so I'm, I'm making this small, small thing here, but um, if you're using the, uh, the bigger glass bowl, probably it'll make um, two um, full glass. And for this size, a little, it'll be the cute size. Um, it's gonna go like, you know, four. So, now the question is, okay, so this is the base of the creme brulee. It's very, very rich once again. Okay, I'm gonna get the cranberries out before it gets cold. You know, a traditional creme brulee often has, like they take a blowtorch over the top and caramelize <laughs> the sugar. Right, Chef Eze. Okay, so what are we gonna do it, right? We don't use sugar, period. So well, maybe I wonder I, if you, you know, but I wonder date sugar. I don't know if you could get that burn with even if you had a blowtorch. I've never tried it. Yeah, date sugar. I don't know actually. Um, you know, the sugar content might be, um, might not be too, might not be high enough to do that. Um, and also lots of fiber in there, so that might be coming in the way. So what I'm going to use is actually chop up uh, coconut flakes and toast it. So the effect is like little burnt, you know, toasted and um, a little bit of a crunchiness, you know. So you could, I, I hate to watch the oven, but you, you could be really, really careful like, um, Watch that um, coconut doesn't get burnt, just right amount, and um, that you could scorch a little more uh, coconut. And that's the version of my creme brulee. What do you think, guys? <laughs> I think it's amazing. I think it looks delicious. It's, it's actually very delicious, very rich. So if you have crave for the richness, decadent creamy, I am sure you will love it. So, okay, now, okay, so the flour is gonna take a little more, but I'm gonna get um, squash out. Let's see if it's done. Yeah, it's, it's done. Okay, so I'm gonna wait a little longer for the barrel. Okay, so let's see. It is maybe five more minutes or so. Um, so in the meantime, I'm gonna fix a um, couple of the uh, mocktails. 
and one of them uses brown rice, and one of them uses the green tea. So um, let's do with the brown rice first. Okay, so brown rice drink is like uh, Shifuji said, it's a coffee alternative, no caffeine from the beginning at all. Just a simple one ingredient is roasted brown rice. But um, it's really high in a fiber and um, polyphenols actually. So it is not just a substitute, you know, um, it, it actually gives you the um, positive health benefits. Somebody at the Japanese university actually studied this particular product and compared with the fake um, fiber like cellulose and um, the drug used for chemotherapy. And um, they actually saw that um, the effect of reducing the, uh, the bad cholesterol um, between this product and the drug about the same effect. So, um, you know, if you are um, thinking about, you know, enforced uh, fiber embossed bread, for example, I don't know how much that is doing for you rather than that cellulose, you can add this. <laughs> That's what I think. Okay, so anyway, here you go. So this is the cactus shaker, as you can see. And I'm going to make um, a little generous size one portion. So I'm going to use one, two teaspoons. One teaspoon will make just one serving, eight ounces a cup. But I'm going to make two servings. And then what we're going to use is mint and a um, little bit here and just chop it up. I'm going to clean up a little bit. Okay. You can bruise it if you have mudla. Uh, what's that name? Mudla, you know, that's pound, pounder. You can pound it or you can chop it. Okay, and just put it in here. And what I'm gonna use is actually ice, but um, the frozen berries work very well. Just to add the subtle fruitiness. So I have frozen blackberries. So I'm going to put just about half a dozen or so. And then one and a half cup of water. I can smell mint already. And then just shake it up. And you can use your favorite, you know, nice looking glass. You can add ice if you like. Actually, I'm gonna add frozen berries here. Mm. Smells like mint chocolate. Yeah, you, okay. can't go, and, you can't go wrong. Yeah, exactly. All right, and then you can a little, you know, garnish with mint. Okay, cheers. Okay, <laughs> it's kind of the, the same. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it here. And all right, so the next one, I'm gonna use green tea. And oops, sorry, <laughs> green tea. Okay, so the next one, actually, I got uh, um, inspired from the date paste and I got the fig, dried fig, <laughs> I got the dried mango and I got the dried white grapes and I made the paste and I have now all kinds of different sweeteners. <laughs> it's just so amazing, wonderful. 
so today for this one, I'm using white grapes. So just, you know, same technique, soak the dried fruit and then process it. And then you have this, you know, beautiful thing ready to use anytime. So for this one, I'm using one, two, white grape paste in a shaker. And uh, now I'm gonna use quarter spoon, teaspoonful of the green tea. Once again, I'm using decaf, but if you like, go ahead and use matcha. Yes, definitely. And then um, water. Okay, so I'm going to use water. Let's see. So for this one, about quarter, quarter cup, okay, quarter cup. Okay, so remember, so white grapes paste and um, the green tea powder and the quarter amount of water. And actually, one more. If you have ginger, this great ginger, and this one is already grated and it's available in a bottle, it's great ginger juice. And I'm gonna use about half teaspoonful. There you go. And shake it up. That's so professional, your little shaker, like bartender. Is it? Okay, thank you. You know, sometimes I have, I want to do the, the whisking up technique thing. Because <laughs> sometimes I see a, a kind of awkward way and oh, don't break your, your wrist <laughs> that way. You better do it a different way. So, so anyway, here we go. So I'm going to pour this in right here in a wine glass. This is normal. I should have um, processed the white grapes a little smoother, but um, this is normal. It's kind of you know, squeezing the, the essence. And what I'm gonna do is I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. <laughs> Mess, okay, now, here we go. Okay, so this is the squeeze the essence and what I'm gonna do is add the salsa water. Okay. okay. So it's like um, mock wine, <laughs> kind of sparkling wine, but um, no alcohol. It's got the green tea goodies in it. So <laughs> cheers, I'm gonna taste it. That is so cool. It's good. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like a ginger ale, um, but um, it's, it's really good. It's, if you like to sweeten more, of course you can add uh, more of the white grapes. And um, actually you can use this kind of a mocktail. You can mocktail recipes using the um, different type of um, the fruit paste that you can make on your own. Okay, so that up. Perfect. Okay, so the farro was cooked. And when the grain is cooked, you will see a little bit of holes, you know, uh, on the surface. That means, you know, the water is well observed and the grains are cooked. Is that, is that right? 
<laughs> okay. So, anyways, now it's December time. Okay. Let's clean up the mess. Okay. Uh, Kiyomi, is this what you're making for your Christmas or Christmas Eve dinner? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, this will make a wonderful Christmas Eve or Christmas dinner. And um, actually, you can add, um, you know, um, boiled green beans. And I'm going to actually do uh, miso dressing, miso green tea dressing. But that will go really well, like gravy. I remember um, you were showing the gravy, um, vegan gravy, and that will go really well, too. So now this one, you know, it's cooled down, so even I can use bare hand. And um, okay, let's fix it up. So it's very soft. So let's move this thing away. Okay, now can you see? Maybe I have to put the stuff away here. Okay, so just scrape and wrap it up. And then the cinnamon and cardamom, cardamom, cardamom. <laughs> can't say that. Um, so that chai spice goes really well and it smells so good. And uh, make it like a mash, mash potato, kind of mash, mash, mash. And then you add the um, rice. Okay. And this is the curry. Okay. okay. And I have here maple syrup that um, just to, about two teaspoons for maple syrup got in here. And if you don't want to use maple syrup, you can use um, date syrup. That is totally fine. And just Gonna go just like that. I put a little bit of side just for decoration and toasted nuts. Uh, I'm using a walnut here, like this. And then once again, I'm gonna put a little bit. Um, outside too, just for the decoration. And of course you can enjoy it too. And this is actually oregano and that green adds a nice color contrast and also that smell and flavor really goes well with fish. So. And if you can't find oregano, Sage will work too, and also mint does a great job too. What, there you go. Did, what did you make for Thanksgiving? Did you make as fancy of a meal as you're making right now? Thanksgiving. We went to, oh yeah, okay. We went to um, my son's place. And my son lives with his best friend and his girlfriend. And um, his girlfriend was not there um, because she needed to be with um, her family. But um, his best friend is my daughter's boyfriend too. And he made a fabulous full course dinner for us. I felt a little sorry for him because I was not able to help him because um, we were traveling from Oregon to Seattle, like seven hour drive. And in the meantime, he cooked everything. So it was the traditional way, uh, how he used to celebrate um, his, you know, with his family that he did a fabulous job. Yeah. Okay, and um, I'm gonna make a little bit of audible size.
Okay, so here's the um, acorn and mush, 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 mushing, and then spice will go uh, distributed evenly. Okay, and uh, just a little cute size cups like that. And you can make probably six or eight of those from two, you know, harvest to squash. And you add just um, cranberries. And you can, <laughs> especially when you find a 25 cents bag of cranberries, you can roast a ton of cranberries and make, make this one because cranberries are so delicious and you want to probably add a lot. Okay, just like that. And then add a little bit of walnuts and a little bit of a green. Okay, here we go. So. There's a question. Do you ever use amla powder? You know what, that is on my radar. I'd love to try that. Mm -hmm. So how do you use Chef oh, I, I've, ne I've never had it. I don't, mm -hmm. I've never mm -hmm. had it. Yeah, I noticed it's uh, one of the, you know, very healthy ingredients and I'd love to try that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we go. We have the um, mock tails, um, mock wine and the, um, little bit of some kind of you know audible kind of thing and main dish okay so i hope you enjoy and uh <laughs> can you see is, is it showing it well yeah i, I mean if you want to if you want to individually bring the things closer to the camera that would be great but yeah it looks beautiful okay all right so this is the creme beret. Okay, and um, this is the little cute bird version of the squash, hearty, comforting squash. And if you like to enjoy big dish like that, okay. And mocktail, chocolatey, minty mocktail, and sparkling wine, kind of. <laughs> And so the, the basic um, way to use, you know, the popular way to use the green tea powder is like a green tea latte <clears throat> or uh, smoothies. But if you are using like soup stock, you can cook like this and you can apply this technique to anything. And uh, you can actually add, um, when you have, <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, I'm sorry, just a sec. If you have, um, if you have great um, hummus, hummus recipe, just to try a little bit of green tea and mix it up and then you can uh, make a wonderful green tea uh, dip. And um, if you want to add a little bit of green and you can sift the green tea powder with using a sifter. So you know, there are uh, very many ways to use your green tea powder. And um, I hope you can have uh, fun with experimenting. And if you come to our website, groundgreentea.com, you can find, you know, all different kinds of recipes and ideas. And, um, you know, I love experiment. So you don't have to have exact, exact ingredients. You can always use, you know, anything available in your fridge and try it out. And um, you can start with a small amount, but, you know, the small amount goes a long way. I was reading the, the research about the nutrition, the catechin comparisons. Of course, you know, catechins are very high in the green tea leaves, uh, even you know, comparing to um, black teas, oolong teas, uh, green tea offers the highest level of catechin. 
And then I was asked, um, you know, what are other vegetables and the fruits? Um, so that's what I was researching. And I, I found out actually, um, for example, um, apple has a little bit of catechin, especially on the skin. But um, that level of the catechins um, from just one, one serving of this green tea powder, for example, a quarter teaspoonful offers like um, 10 times more catechins and strawberries the same way. So if you compare 100 gram or three and a half ounce of the strawberries, um, still this green tea offers like 10 times more catechins. Okay, now let's talk about the dark chocolate. Okay, let's say dark chocolate. Um, okay, we're gonna close eyes for the, the sugar content, right? Okay. And um, if you just compare the, the catechin amount in the dark chocolate and um, this green tea, still this one offers like, you know, um, two times more. And guess what? The calories from 100 gram, three and a half ounce of dark chocolate is like almost 900 calories. And um, this zero. So those are the comparisons. If you'd like to add catechins, okay, the real food source like this is better than the supplement. And um, I think um, I stopped there. So I'm going to. I'm gonna tell you now that uh, the whole food means green tea offers you more than catechins and the trace minerals are high. For example, zinc and chromium and also man uh, man manganese. Okay, so what is good for chromium? Um, it's, it's really good for you, especially if your blood sugar level is high and because it, it controls the blood sugar level. And also um, one of the studies said it kind of um, um, suppressed the hunger so that it'll prevent you binge food. We can use that. And um, also manganese is a great one um, for the tissue, connection of the tissues. So it's good for skin, hair, and our nervous system. So, um, you know, some people are, it's not you, but some people are still eating the, you know, the garbage, right? And then taking the supplements and, uh, you know, they feel like they are taking care of themselves, but that's not really equal to enjoying these real, beautiful, real foods, the whole foods, and uh, especially plant-based food will give you the polyphenols, antioxidants, all kinds of nutrition. So I'm sure you are eating like a rainbow color, but please add green tea and brown rice is great source of the polyphenols too. So add these to the, uh, your rainbow colored meals so yeah yeah very well said well thank you so much thank you okay and and have a very happy holiday oh thank you so much yeah well the same to you Chef AJ and um I've been really grateful you know um I I'm sharing this you know special opportunity with you and uh thank you so much I am uh, wishing you all the merriest holidays and the happiest, the healthiest new year. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kiyomi. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have a very inspiring success story of two couples that lost several hundred pounds using a plant-based diet. I can't wait to try the creme brulee. That looked amazing. Yes, please try. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kiyomi. Take